Okay. Uh, so I have uh, three cases of heart failure. Uh, all uh, very, very rare cases. Uh, let me start with the uh, important uh, which case, which is called, even called as the enigmatic case, uh, which is uh, especially localized to certain part of geographical part of your country, and especially which is common uh, in this part of uh, region where we are now conducting our conference. Uh, how to process? Uh, down here, okay. Okay, uh, just going to the brief uh, history, is the patient is a 50 years, 56 years old female, known case of Bajari syndrome, uh, status post hepatic vein stenting done six years back, asymptomatic, completely asymptomatic, now presented with, uh, to our hospital with complaints of edema, feet of two months duration, extreme fatigability, breathlessness. Um, she was actually evaluated in the medical gastroenterology department and radiology department. At the time, ultrasonogram showed congestive liver with some turbulence in the um, inferior vena cava. And she underwent CAT study to rule out any hepatic vein obstruction and the stenting, which has, whether it has obstructed or not. A CAT study showed uh, highly elevated RA pressures uh, with a normal RV and pulmonary artery pressures. So she was referred to cardiology department for ev further evaluation. On examination, she had elevated jugular venous pressure, pulse, um, other findings were unremarkable. And just I will go to the ECG. ECG, you can see um, there is um, almost uh, no, ma no major of um, fi abnormal findings within normal limits. X-ray, you can see a marked cardiomegaly with evidence of pericardial effusion. And this is a echocardiogram showing um, parasitic long axis uh, showing um, pericardial effusion. Uh, LA and LB being normal, I, and you can see some calcification, um, but which, it will be well made out in the next view. And this is a parasitic long axis view, and uh, there is no RVOT obstruction or anything. And this is the apical four chamber view. You can see there is a marked obliteration of the RV apex, and. Uh, Pericardial effusion is present in the TR uh, is TR is uh, you can see a moderate tricuspid regurgitation. There is see you can see a marked endocardial calcification of the RV apex, and there is um, apical obliteration of the RV. And this you can see the RV apex is completely obliterated, and you can see a calcification in the RV apex. So this uh, patient presented to with um, right heart failure with apical fibrosis in RV and moderate pericardial effusion and and Doppler uh, might Doppler feature showing restrictive physiology and there is even pre-systolic opening of pulmonary valve. So here you have a patient who have a right, dilated uh, right atrium, mildly dilated uh, right dilated right atrium chambers with tricuspid regurgitation and endocardial. Uh, calcification of the R RV uh, with oblit apical ob obliteration and restrictive flow pattern. This all uh, concurring with the right ventricular endomyocardial fibrosis, which is very rare, um, but which is common in this part of uh, region, especially in Kerala. Um, but this is also the incidence is coming down. I think uh, previously it was uh, there for more. In I think in last two decades, the incidence is coming in uh, Kerala is also. And uh, going into just. Um, Brief, uh, I think I will. So EMF, uh, you all know that is a disease from affects the apical uh, region of the right heart, and it is one of the most common cause of restricted cardiac myopathy worldwide. And uh, this is uh, how you differentiate various types of RCM. I will just skip um, in the interest of time. It is also called as the Davies disease, mainly a tropical disease, usually located within the 15 degrees of equatorial belt. And the Davis is the person who first described this one. And uh, EMF accounts for all, uh, as much as 20% of cardiac cases sent for echocardiography in country like uh, Africa. And it has been reported in South India, especially in Kerala also. It presents usually with right cord failure and left cord failure or sometimes uh, biventricular failure. Um, etiology is not still clearly known. Um, it has been uh, found to be due to malnutrition, poverty, infections, especially viral and parasitic infections where you have increased eosinophilia. 
and uh, toxic agents like cerium this is common and cassava which is common in this part of region where they can the consumption is very high and serotonin uh, due to the more amount of consumption of plantain in this region so this all contributes to more incidence of um, emf in kerala okay and this is a uh, pathogenesis is a mycoidal fibrosis and formation of fibrous tissue in the endocardium and to lesser extent um, in the mycoidium of even both ventricles. So this will be the usual clinical features, patient will present with a massive ascites and a diagnosis is, echo is the most valuable tool for diagnosing EMF and uh, even MRI can be useful and which can help in the di confirming the diagnosis of uh, EMF. So this is how uh, it looks like and we are, uh, if you have a RVMF, it will be like what we have seen in our patient. So these are some features, how the patient presents with, if patient has a, a pericardial effusion which is present in our case, it, it indicates a worse, very worse prognosis. No specific treatment is available at present. And this is how you will see, you have a calcification of the endocardium with the dimple of, dimple seen at the RV apex, uh, uh, this is all due to uh, fibrosis and we have a severe uh, tricuspid regitation and marker dilatation of RA, this all contribute to the massive cardiomegaly. So this is the MRI picture also helps us to uh, skip that. So the take-home message in this case is, uh, if you uh, come across any, EMF is a restrictive cardiomyopathy observed in tropical countries like um, India and especially in Kerala. It is sometimes maybe indistinguishable from lawless endocarditis observed in temperate country uh, region. The pathogenesis is still uh, not clearly known and uh, the consumption of more consumption of cass um, cassava and uh, plantain may be responsible. Echocardiography will be very useful in uh, diagnosing this condition. The prognosis is usually poor and mortality is measured to be around 23% per, per year. Thank you. Uh, I think I came to know that no other person is here to present any other echo case. Anyone is going to present? You, I will have one more echo case to be presented. Huh? Okay, okay. So I will present that case also within two or three minutes. And yeah, second one. So this is a very, very rare case. I think many of you may, may not have come across a very, very rare case. I was the first time I think I have seen this case. And um, a rare case of intractable heart failure in a newborn. Um, this child uh, is a born first day newborn female baby, preterm 36 weeks, low birth weight, two kilogram, delivered by LSCS due to low biophysical profile. It did not cry immediately with the Opkov score at 0, 3, 4. Resisted with mechanical ventilation and anotropic support. No major, co clinically, no major morphological abnormalities except some restricted movements in the left elbow and right uh, hip. Uh, this is a born of second degree consanguineous marriage and anomaly scan was done uh, by our uh, Kannan. I think is not available at present. Uh, so fetal scan also, she underwent also a fetal scan at the age of five months, which shows a marked egogenic focus in the uh, region of AV ring, uh, both AV valves and so uh, fetal echo showing a tricuspid valve calcification, restricted movements of the tricuspid uh, valve and at seven months also it is repeated, it also say, showed the same findings, marked calcification of the tricuspid and mitral annulus and, um, and there is also, um, so Still, diagnosis was not known. Baby born with the same abnormal frequency. You can see there is a marker calcification in the other chambers. There is a LVH is there, but you can see a marker calcification of great arteries you are encountering. And there is a PDA is there. That is uh, not important. But what we are going to see is the marker calcification of all the great arteries in the uh, baby, uh, both uh, pulmonary artery, iota. All, you can see the you can see the calcifications nicely, and there is a calcification of mitral annulus and tricuspid annulus. Both the pulmonary artery and the mitral um, aortic uh, aorta are calcified, and you can see here also you can see the calcification. So all other views showing you can the 
calcification extending into the ascending iota and its branches of aorid. So, uh, sorry, uh, this is the third second case I am presenting. So, I think, can I extend that? I can present, no? Okay, okay. So, you can see the calcification extending into the entire uh, great vessels of the patient. So, the, all other views confirming the findings abdominal iaton, great artery. What's important is uh, the baby also had a calcification of the art articular cartilage of the elbow. Uh, you usually it won't happen in the newborn child. He has a calcification now. So apart, so all the elastic arteries are calcified, and there is a calcification of the cartilages of the elbow and right hip, and also pinna calcification was also present. So the, to sum up, you can see ascending aortic calcification. You can see the calcification seen in the elbow, and you can see some calcification also involving the pinna also. So you can see calcification in the left elbow and pinna calcification and even a calcification in the splenic arteries and renal arteries. Um, investigations, especially we looked for um, creatinine uric acid which is normal. Um, ALP is on the high, slightly higher side, 195. And um, a diagnosis of idiopathic infantile arterial calcification was made. And going into this uh, rare diagnosis is extremely rare and usually a fatal genetic disorder. And it is a rare autosomal disease characterized by extensive calcification of medium and large arteries. And uh, diagnosis usually made at autopsy. And sometimes you may be able to possible to diagnose this disease prenatally if you do a fetal scan. And uh, it has been reported very rarely in even in literature. If you go by literature, it is only around 200 cases has been reported in worldwide with 85% of the patients diagnosed in infancy and they die usually before six months of age due to severe heart failure, hypertension and heart failure. And it is caused by um, the loss of function mutation, especially ENPPP, uh, that is um, ectonucleotide pyrophosphate um, gene, which is responsible for um, inorganic pyrophosphate, which is the inhibitor of hydroxyapatite crystal deposition in the blood vessels and uh, cartilages. If you don't have this gene, um, if there is a loss of sense mutation, then definitely there will be aggressive calcification of the all great arteries and pinna. And the child, the disease presents from even in the third to fourth months of age. And the more, most common symptoms will be uh, respiratory distress, severe hypertension and heart failure. No specific treatment available. Various name given for this rare entity are generalized calcification, arterial calcification of infancy, arterial calcification, idiopathic arterial calcification of infancy, and occlusive infantile arterial calcification. And these are some pictures from other cases which have been reported, which is similar to our case. You can see. You can see the great calcification involving the iota and branches, abdominal arteries, even splenic artery and renal arteries, and even the abdominal iotic branches are calcified. Sir? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank okay. You. Thank you. So, sir. just Thank I want the audience, especially Mani Vaskum Sir and Shanmusham Sir, whether they have come across <laughs> any case. Uh, many times, uh, echogenic focus, we usually come across many fetal scan. They will uh, report that a patient has a echogenic focus in the LV and they will refer for uh, a yeah, fetal uh, scan when the child is born. But rarely they are telling this can be one of the cause. And very, very rare, but we should keep in our mind. Thank sir, thank you for thank this you, nice sir. presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.